So finally today, I got one of the tools you guys have long requested me to finally get to add to the uh, surplus of stuff I already have. It's in that box right now, but it's amazing how much stuff you can get from Amazon. Jeez, let's unbox this thing. I cannot wait to try it. It's long overdue, I'll say. You guys know I've been upgrading my tools lately. Switched over to red, but it is about 6,000 degrees outside. For some reason I'm wearing black. So, let's cut into this bad boy. For the amount of time that I spend on projects, it wouldn't be like bad to have you know a little bit more efficiency. And then for the amount of time I actually need one of these, I didn't really want to spend thousand, fifteen hundred bucks on one. So I read some reviews on this little gem. <laughs> it's a war fox. And honestly, I, they were all about the same review and the same price. This was 250 bucks off Amazon. 110 over 220 and or 120 over 240 whatever you want to call it but i kind of went with orange because uh generally kind of stuff you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna open this thing up and see how she performs this is a plasma cutter that's supposed to do just over half inch which is plenty for what i need if uh i need more than that i can resort to going up to Haas's house he's got an expensive one that's plasma cam so this is what I'm really curious about. Yeah, just as I thought. This is, I don't know why they do it like this. But, so this is what I was kind of scared of. It was a mirror image when it showed this online, I think. But check it out. We got the right plug-in and everything. Already in the system. We're a step ahead of the game. Cut through half inch of steel with uh, power and air. Really freaking lightweight. So we gotta hook this thing up, you need regulated air to it. Oh, that one is. That one's easy. Boom. That's installed. Got ourselves ground. Still kind of tip. Oh, it even came with a little slider tip. Alright, cool. It's been a while since I used a plasma cutter. Quite a few number of years. Most of that seems pretty self-explanatory. Put the regulator on her though. Water separator. Where do you go? Is there really just right there? That's it? Oh, that's simple. We'll get the instructions out just in case. Oh, it looks stupid right there. <laughs> that is way too easy. Shin. This is going to come in super handy because then I can just build them from scratch and I don't have to cut and weld in chunks, little items like that. Speed up the whole process of getting these things done and moved out of here. Same thing with. Uh, Mounting flatbeds and stuff like that. Bandsaw definitely helps. I'll show you guys what I've been using, and then obviously this will be a lot nicer. Push locks are so much easier, and they hold some dang good pressure. Like these for uh, airbags on your pickup truck. Hundred pounds, no problem in one of those things. I'll go back through and retighten all these, but. Got some actual good Teflon, you know, because this stuff, I don't know how much this would cost them, but when this is only a dollar at the store for me, hard to imagine that, that they paid like a penny for that. Oh, it's still crazy that you can get a freaking plasma cutter thing there, turnkey ready to go for 250 bucks shop delivered to your door. Imagine that that goes in there like that. Goes there. That goes like that. They gave an extremely long amount of this stuff. I'm not really sure why. They didn't fit on there very good. Kind of good. 
We gave you plenty of spare stuff. Look at that. Probably five times too much. This sucker goes on right here. Going at this for five minutes. As far as I can tell, she's all hooked up. Let's try it on 110 at first on quarter inch because the reviews I read on this one said it had no trouble going through quarter inch with 110. Quarter inch. Regulator going. I'm gonna pop her. Yeah, pop her. Let's add some juice to her. Um. Shows a nice little diagram right here. Uh, 30 to 50 if you're running 120. 70 or 30 to 70 if you're going to be running 240. So let's clean, tone her down a little bit. keen on the uh, 120 thing so let's go to the 240 damn so that means we can turn up the we can go to 70 let's go to 60 try that out it's blasting through it me being a rook obviously doesn't help but uh, I think if I had a different tip put the board on it let's try this This mirror, is that way more hardcore? First project is some drop shackles for the first gen that are an inch and a half. Man, I can't see this freaking square with crap. Man, oh, I was off. Starting to get the hang of it here. Yeah, it looks pretty square. Definitely have to put a board down because you're pretty much shooting blind. You can't just put a mark on it and go for it. And I turned it up uh, probably about three quarter and it'll eat through it now. But, oh, come on. Trying to run it one handed, which says something.
Oh, sporty right there in the center. Probably going a little too fast for it, but. Yeah, where I was going super slow in the beginning, even turned way up. It just barely, right there at the end, was, you can see. What I'm talking about is, if you're going too fast, it'll try to bubble out to the sides. So that's what it was doing on one of those. But uh, check this one out. This was the first one I did. Look at that. That actually, that was uh, squaring it up in the beginning. I showed you that one. Oh, and also, I'll do this right now for you guys. I'll put that uh, half inch one back on there and show you that. Okay, half inch. I wouldn't say it's super tough steel, but. That is like, <laughs> I mean, it's obviously very crude. I didn't take my time. I just cut through it just to show you guys that piece of scrap. But that is pretty damn impressive. A $250 unit right there, that would take you like five minutes with a grinder and a cutoff wheel. So this is what I would typically use. I just throw it in a bandsaw. Shorter stuff doesn't really work out for that, but it works, you know, you make it happen. Or you go back to Old Faithful. Um, I actually, you know, I run the Makita cordless. Those things aren't good for a long time. You can put a big cutter on the, the big six inch saw or the four and a halfs. Well, that one might even be bigger than that, I forget. But cutting through it with that, uh, you spend a lot of time and frustration and getting hit with sparks. Something like this, it could just take it out in a matter of seconds and it's cut through it. If you stage it a little bit better, you can obviously give it an effect, but I'm pretty happy with it. I think I got enough of those. I got one, two, three, four. Yep. Let's go ahead and start building the drop shackles. For the Cause it, you got a freaking laser torch. Cause we're lazy. That's cool as hell watching it from this angle. Right. Yeah, well I got my headlight on, I'm gonna talk to the audience. Uh, we're gonna cut the exhaust off. Probably cut these off right here too. Uh, it does stick down quite a bit. I put a gusset on the back side, so we got some stability. Um, because that is quite a bit of lift and the truck is sitting half inch from level like I was saying but I'm gonna cut the exhaust and we're gonna switch it from three inch factory I don't think there's a cat on this but we're gonna go four inch straight um, I don't want to spend the four or five hundred bucks on the um, exhaust so we're gonna make our own because I got tons of it laying around
to speed on just what has gone down in the shop in the last several weeks since I filmed the plasma cutter video. Um, I've had several projects come through here. The first gen is actually in Idaho now. I sold that bad boy and it went to a good home. I'm very happy about that. Uh, Living the kit, no problems like I would expect out of my homemade plasma cut item. So we're going to talk about the plasma cutter and just, it's a cut 50 DP war fox. Very happy with this thing for a $300 value. Turnkey, pretty much ready to go. I did run it on the 110 like I showed, and it did, I mean, it did all right. I'm not really complaining. If that's all you have is 110, you can make this happen on light material. But it popped my 15 amp circuit breaker that happened to be on that uh, circuit. So I just went ahead and plugged it into the 220. Had no problems with it after that. Turn up the air pressure um, and coordinates for running the 220. And you can see how well she cut through. It's going to leave a little bit of slag every time. You just pop that off with a hammer. Not a big deal. But of the quarter inch stuff, no problem. Half inch, she buttered right through that. That was just kind of shooting at the hip. Uh, that'll happen on your bigger jobs if you don't put a straight edge alongside of it. 300 bucks, can't complain. For how much I'm going to use that thing, it's going to sit in the shelf. I can store it easily. It's not like um, your torches, you got to have your oxygen and settling. And pretty much every time you need those in a hurry, you are out of gas. All that thing takes is air pressure, which is air compressor, and then electricity. So two simple things that are readily available and easy to get. Um, they're plumbed right to your house if you have a compressor. That's all you need. And that thing's ready to rock and roll. But uh... <laughs> Comment below what your preference is as far as plasma cutters. Obviously, they're a lot easier than a torch. Turnkey, boom, boom. So... Anyway, if you ever bought a cheap one, put it below. Let me hear about it. See you.